Unit 9 of CSIR Net Life Science Syllabus is about diversity of life forms and is considered to be an advantage for CSIR Net aspirants having botany or zoology background. So if you are preparing for Unit 9 and don't have a zoology botany background, then don't worry. Even if you have a microbiology, biotechnology, biochemistry or any other educational background, Unit 9 you can easily prepare. All you need to do is emphasize on the important topics and one such important topic from where the questions are most frequently asked every year in CSIR Net Life Science exam is cladistics. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tanushri and in this video, I will be discussing some very important previous year questions on the topic cladistics. So let's have a look at the type of questions asked on this topic in CSIR Net Life Science exam. The very first question, the very first type of questions most frequently asked on this topic is figure based. As you can see here. So the question is identify the syn apomorphies in the following cladogram. A cladogram is given to you and the options are given and you have to identify the syn apomorphies in this cladogram. Now to answer such figure based question, such cladogram based question, you need to be familiar with what is cladistics, what is cladogram and even you need to be familiar with the terms like syn apomorphies, autoapomorphy or even uh, the term that is uh, plesomorphy can also be given in the exam. And even you need to be familiar with the plant or animal classification to answer such question, biological classification to answer such questions. So when we talk about cladistics, it is a methodology that attempts to analyze phylogenetic data objectively. This cladistic term is derived from a Greek word. This word cladistic is derived from the ancient Greek word clados, which means branch. So it's an approach to biological classification in which organisms are categorized into groups based on hypothesis of most recent common ancestry. And the evidence for hypothesized relationship is typically shared derived characteristics that are not present in more distant groups and ancestors. Cladogram, it is again derived from Greek word klados, which means branch and gramma, which means character. So it's a diagram which is using cladistics to show relations among organisms. I'm sure you have come across such type of diagrams. So either you can draw the cladogram this way or even you can draw it this way. So cladogram uses lines that branch off in different directions ending at a clade, a group of organisms with a last common ancestor. And when we talk about the terms like synapomorphies or plesomorphy, so plesomorphy, it means a primitive or ancestral character state. So primitive or ancestral character state is called as plesomorphy or plesomorphic character. And a shared plesomorphy is called as symplesomorphy. For example, as you can see here in this phylogenetic tree, all mammals, they have the backbone. Lamprey, bass, frog, turtle, leopard, they all have vertebral column. They have backbones. But a backbone does not distinguish mammals from other vertebrates because all the vertebrates have backbone. Thus, for mammals, the backbone is a shared ancestral character, a character that originated in an ancestor of the Texan. In contrast to an ancestral character state, a derived character state, or you can call it as advanced character state, or evolutionary novelty. It is called as apomorphy or apomorphic character. And shared apomorphy is called as syn apomorphy. For example, here, it's a character state, it's a character shared by all mammals but not found in their ancestors. 
does in mammals here is considered a shared derived character or you can say an evolutionary novelty unique to a clade then also we have a term called as autoapomorphy so an apomorphy that is unique to a taxon is called as autoapomorphy an example of a non anatomical autoapomorphy in modern humans is speech which is unique to humans as given in the question this cladogram it is about the families pinaceae aerocuraceae and cupressaceae and we have to identify the synapomorphy that is the character derived uh, derived character state in common with two or more taxa and these are the synapomorphies mentioned that whether the seeds have long terminal wing and ovules are 1 to 20 per scale or one ovule per scale or is it resin canals now to answer this question you need to be familiar with the gymnosperms pinaceae aerocuraceae and cupressaceae they these are the families belong to order coniferales division pinophyta in gymnosperms and also to answer this question you need to be familiar with the features of these families so when we talk about pinaceae pinaceae also called as pine family so the salient feature of this uh, family is that they have evergreen resinous trees with linear to needle like leaves as shown in this picture and specifically as we have to focus on the synapomorphy so the the feature of this pinaceae family is that it has the seeds with long terminal wing derived from so that means b should be seed with long terminal wing which is given in option number 2 and if you see any other option other options uh, you will not like this uh, seed with long terminal wing is not given for b in any other option so uh, simply by seeing this we can say that answer is option 2 but let's confirm the answer cupressaceae family it's also called as cypress family and the salient feature of this family is that it has trees or shrubs leaves uh, scale like or needle like and they are persistent on the branches uh, after dying and this family has 1 to 20 ovules so that means d should be ovules 1 to 20 per scale which is again given in option 2 and each scale with single ovule is the characteristic feature of the family aerocuraceae which is also called as monkey puzzle tree family the salient feature of this uh, family is that they have large trees with naked buds highly resinous and leaves needle like to lanceolate so further we can see that uh, the c should be one ovule per scale which is given in option 2 and a it is a resin canal so hence answer is option 2 now another type of question which can be asked is again figure based but along with it they can give you a data matrix or character table so one such question is shown here question is identify the most appropriate cladogram that can be constructed using the data matrix given below assuming zero are plesiomorphic and ones are apomorphic characters now to answer such questions you have to learn how to read this data matrix or analyze this data matrix or character table and based on analysis of this uh, data matrix you have to choose you have to learn how to identify the most appropriate cladogram now for this like how cladograms are generated or this data matrix or character table is generated and analysis is done so for this let's consider the set of characters for each of five vertebrates a leopard turtle frog bass fish and lamprey which is a jawless aquatic vertebrate now as a basis of comparison we need to select an outgroup now what is outgroup An outgroup is a species or group of species from an evolutionary lineage that is known to have diverged before the lineage that includes the species we are studying that is in group so we are studying in group a suitable outgroup you can determine 
based on the evidence from morphology, paleontology, embryonic development and even gene sequences. So an appropriate outgroup for our example is lens slate, a small animal that lives in mud flats and like vertebrates is a member of Chordata. Now unlike the vertebrates, however, the lens slate does not have a vertebral column or backbone. So by comparing the members of the in-group with each other and with the out-group, we can determine which characters were derived at the various branch points of vertebrate evolution. For example, all of the vertebrates in the in-group have the backbones. Only the lens slate, which is the out-group, does not have a backbone. So this character, backbone, was present in the ancestral vertebrate, but not in the out-group. Now note that hinged jaws are a character absent in lampreys, but present in other members of the in-group. So this character helps us to identify an early branch point in the vertebrate clade. So proceeding in this way, we can even translate this data in our table of characters into a phylogenetic tree as shown over here that groups all the in-group taxa into a hierarchy based on their shared derived characters. So like four walking legs is a derived character for frog, turtle, leopard, amnion for turtle and leopard and here is a derived character or you can say apomorphic character for leopard. So similarly in this question a data matrix a character table is given. So zero represents plesiomorphic character and one represents apomorphic characters. So, apomorphy, I have already told you, it means a specialized or derived character state, whereas plesiomorphy refers to primitive or ancestral trait. So, if we analyze this data matrix, uh, we will find that uh, for A group, 1 to 5 characters are plesiomorphic because you can see 0 is given. However, for B, both second and third are apomorphic characters. For C, only 2 is an apomorphic character and for D, 2, 3 and 5 are apomorphic character. So, in or if we write down the order of primitive to advanced, so this is what is asked in the question, primitive to advanced, advanced character, if we order them, then the order will be A because it includes the plesiomorphic characters. Then it will be B, uh, it will be C because it has only one apomorphic character, derived character. Then it will be B because it has two apomorphic characters and finally D which has three apomorphic characters. Now if you look at the cladograms, A primitive. So, which is given in option 1 and 2, that means answer is between option 1 and 2, 3 and 4 cannot be the answer. And if you look at C, B and D, like this is our sequence from primitive to advanced, then accordingly, according to it, according to the sequence, the most appropriate cladogram is second one. So, answer here is option 2. Another type of question which can be asked on this topic is statement based question. So, as shown here, no figure is given. Apomorphies are given and you have to choose the option which represents the correct evolutionary sequence of the given apomorphies which are development of xylem, development of cuticle, development of independent sporophyte and development of eustein. So, I am sure CSNet aspirants having botany background they can easily answer this question because all you need to recall is the plant classification. As we all know plant kingdom it includes without doubt the green algae, liverworts, mosses, pteridophytes, gymnosperms and finally the angiosperms, the largest group of plants. Now, one way to distinguish group of plants is whether or not they have an extensive system of vascular tissue. Cells joined into tubes that transport water and nutrients throughout the plant body. Most present day plants, they have a complex uh, vascular tissue system and are therefore called as vascular plants. Plants that do not have an extensive transport system like liverworts, mosses, hornworts, they are described as non-vascular plants. 
even though some mosses do have simple vascular tissue. Non-vascular plants, they are often informally called as bryophytes, which is derived from Greek word bryon, which means uh, moss, and phyton, which means plant. So vascular plants uh, which form a clade that comprises about 93% of all extant plant species can be categorized further into smaller clades and two of these clades are the lycophytes and therophytes. So lycophytes they include club mosses and their relatives and therophytes include ferns and their relatives. The plant in each of these clades lacks seeds which is why collectively the two clades are often informally called as seedless vascular plants. And seed plants, they can be divided into two groups, gymnosperms and angiosperms, based on the absence or presence of enclosed chambers in which seeds mature. So gymnosperms, where uh, gymnos, it is again derived from Greek word gymnosperms, so from gymnos, which means naked, and Sperm means seed. So gymnosperms are grouped together as naked seed plants because their seeds are not enclosed in chambers. Living gymnosperm species, the most familiar of which are the conifers, probably form a clade. Then angiosperms, again this is derived from a Greek word, angion, which means container. So, angiosperms are a huge clade consisting of all flowering plants. And angiosperm seeds, they develop inside the chamber called as ovaries which originate within flowers and mature into fruit. So, nearly 90% of living plant species are angiosperms. So, mentioned in the question, these are the four apomorphies. Now, cuticle, when we talk about Cuticle, plant cuticle, it is a protecting film covering the outermost skin layer that is epidermis of leaves, young shoots and other aerial plant organs. So aerial here means all plant parts not embedded in soil or other substrate. So cuticle, it covers the outermost skin layer of leaves, young shoots and other aerial plant organs that have no periderm. And this uh, protecting film, cuticle, it consists of lipid, and hydrocarbon polymers infused with wax and is synthesized exclusively by the epidermal cells. And this plant cuticle is one of a series of innovations together with stomata, xylem and phloem and intercellular spaces in stem and later leaf mesophyll tissue that plants evolved more than 450 million years ago during the transition between life in water and life on land. So cuticle, development of cuticle is the oldest. Then development of independent sporophyte. So if you study the features of bryophyta, uh, bryophytes, bryophyte sporophytes are usually green and photosynthetic when young, but they cannot live independently. So this is, this apomorphy is associated with uh, bryophytes. Then development of xylem. So as discussed in the previous slide that uh, xylem, like if you see the development of vascular tissue. So it is in pteridophytes. And then development of eusti, which is the characteristic of dicots and not of uh, monocots, pteridophytes or bryophytes. So, if we arrange all these four apomorphies, if we arrange it in correct evolutionary sequence from oldest to the newest, then it will be development of cuticle that is B, then development of independent sporophyte that is C, development of xylem which is A and development of eustil which is D. According to the given options, the answer is option 3 as BCAD sequence is only given in option 3 and therefore is the answer. So we have discussed three types of uh, CSIR net life science previous year questions based on cladistics. I hope you have understood the concept and learned something new today and have enjoyed this video.
So keep practicing and keep learning. Thank you.